Yo, what's good? We got another another review in the works, yeah? I just listened to the first time. This is, let alone the record, this is my first time listening to the UK subs. I've just listened to the entirety of the record, another kind of blues, alright? And I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a couple of tidbits in regards to what I thought of the record. Now let me give you a little bit of background in regards to my awareness of the UK subs. So I've been attending shows for a minute. Uh, starting off in metal, softer metals, then harder metals, extremer metals, then I got into hardcore punks and so forth. So I was a frequent and I, I live in a major city as well, in England, so a lot of bands came through, a lot of touring bands. This band is from nearabouts anyway. It's the UK subs, you know what I mean? So um, on my endeavours when I've been watching bands and stuff, I've seen the UK subs on a regular basis on flyers playing on different dates and so forth, although I've never actually managed to get around to seeing them myself. Still to this day, I've not seen this band. Or even though having a little bit of an... Uh, uh, acquired taste in uh, punk rock and hardcore music and so forth and alternate musics as a general I've never ever found the time or the direction into listening to the UK subs nobody's ever cited them as a um, a reference point or a uh, influence of such but considering I do a reaction channel I thought you know what we listen to punk rock music it's a great opportunity to check out the subs and see what they've got got in store. Now I've got the Wikipedia Wikipedia page open here so I might ring off a couple of things that will even be new to me but I have just listened to the entire record so there's going to be some very original material and my food for thought as I was listening to the record. Um, first and foremost I did check out the UK subs um, Wikipedia like the band Wikipedia page um, prior to delving in just to ensure I had the first record uh, on lock and I wasn't listening to something down the line because I like to go from all the way as early from the start, all the way through all of the records. And I was blown away by the amount of material this band has put out. Um, this debut LP was put out in 79. And from the information I found, um, da -da 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 -da, which I'll just find it now. It states... Man, I don't even know. I don't even know. But um, as far as far as their uh, mainstream success is concerned, it was dead and done by the very, very, very early 80s. Um, so I don't know if they've annoyed someone in the industry in doing so, because they've definitely lost contact in doing so. I doubt it was punk for punk's sake. We don't want to do this no more. We don't want to succeed anymore as a band. So for whatever purpose, they've not been able to um, reach the... You know, the suits as well as they did really early, which is quite bizarre to me, especially considering the amount of material they've released over the years and they've not had any hits as to where they did right at the start. That's bizarre to me, but also I've got the past members here in front of me and man, I've got a uncountable amount of past members, so I don't know what's going on with this band. Um, I think the original writer, or at least the frontman, still is within the band and that's Charlie Harper um, which is a name I'm unaware of I've got a little photo of him here looks pretty badass older fella obviously nowadays uh, but he's got a good head of air on him you know what I mean he looks the part so let's get on to the record yeah sorry uh, if I uh, sort of went on and one this is a uh, exploration in itself for me so my first acknowledgement is this is an early record so I'm gonna have to take with a pinch of salt but there's just as much rock and roll in here, as far as the guitar lines are concerned. Some relatively intricate picking um, on the single note lines and so forth. The bassist was taking that bass for a walk. He was nice with it. The bassist was nice. The drumming was punk rock drumming, rock and roll drumming. Uh, like to noodle on that closed hi-hat. Very driving for the most part, just driving the track from start to finish. No problems. Great energy. Um, the vocalist reminded me of, uh, from, I know very little about this band. I can't even tell you how you pronounce the 
name of the band, but it reminded me of the sound I've heard from that act, Devo. Potentially pronounced Devo, I don't know. But, reminded me of that a little bit. Now, overall, the standard of the record was good. It was a good record. Um, was it my taste? Not really. Um, okay, it's it didn't it didn't possess the qualities of punk music I'm uh, excited by for the most part. But I found that the latter half of the record, or in more, you know, if, if I have to be more direct, the last quarter of the record. They uh, sort of swung into a uh, more straightforward punk rock sound as opposed to the, uh, you know, the guitar based rock and roll element that they, that, that, that they were right at the start. Like, there was a development as the record continued and Near about the end is where I found my two favourite tunes, which was Stranglehold at the end. The Stranglehold was so good, I thought it was a cover. I thought it was a cover. I thought, this is um, a bit different to what we've been hearing. And with it being at the end of a 17-track album... Um, let me double-check if it was 17, because I was listening to the remaster as well. Yeah, 17. Um, with it being at the end, you know what I mean? That's a long journey just to get to that great tune. Uh, but I like that one, and I like the tune All I Want to Know, which was track 12. I thought there was a great gang vocal, great powerful chorus. I mean, they were hitting a nice melody and a nice chorus when they wanted to every once in a while. Uh, but it didn't come as consistently as I had wanted it to. Um, a good guitar solo here and there. They didn't overplay the guitar solos, which is something I'm very happy about. Uh, there was about two if not three proper guitar solos in the record and they were all good they were all tasty they were all good enough you know they all added depth to the soundscape so that was really good it wasn't just for ego's sake for the most part and yeah yeah what more can be said really as far as the artwork's concerned um, it made me feel a bit uncomfortable it made me feel a bit uncomfortable i know the um Album is entitled Another Kind of Blues, so it's congruent with, you know, the title of the record and makes it a lot more memorable, which is definitely not a bad thing. But the shade of blues um, on the cover, I just felt was a little uncomfortable to look at. And as I'm doing these reactions, I don't watch music videos or like visuals alongside. I just have the album artwork there in front of me. And it was just a bit of an uncomfortable colour for me to just, you know what I mean? A bit of a dark, dingy solemn blue it was like a depressive blue in my opinion um as opposed to like an icy bright lovely color it was just a bit dingy really so i i, I want i want i want to fuss on that and um i know that we're all receptive to different things me personally like things like that um colors and how they affect me is it's a real thing it's a real thing it, it definitely altered my perspective of the sound believe it or not purely as I have to link it onto the visual art I have before me, and I just felt there was a bit of a disconnect as far as that's concerned. Uh, I also don't get the front cover, to be honest with you. Uh, I'm missing a reference or a concept because I don't know why the fella's wearing that bizarre mask. I don't know where it refers to, so, you know, I'm a bit out of the loop when it comes to that. But I think for a debut LP, it's a very exciting front cover because it's um, evidently very conceptual. You know, it sort of leaves me out of the, um, leaves me outside as opposed to invites me in as a listener, which I don't think is a great thing, uh, personally. I think, uh, sometimes it's nice to, uh, keep things simple purely for the understanding of those who want to support the band or may support the band down the line, given that they have a, you know, a connection as such. So... That's that really. Um, the guitars were good, the production was good, but once again I was listening to a remaster. Uh, the sound engineering must have been good because, you know, the instrumentation was good, it was well recorded, the performance on the record was good, um, high octane energy, um, very nice. A couple of toe tappers in there which was good. And that's about it. Um, 
I'm a bit scared by the depth of material and catalog this band has. So if people are interested uh, on me listening further into the UK subs discography, I know there's going to be an incredible daunting journey ahead of me. And given that I sort of couldn't relate so much to this record or sound or band, um, that's quite scary to me. So I'm going to give it a rating and to me... I'm going to be generous, yeah, I'm going to be generous, and this is a 4 out of 10 in my world. Um, There's better punk rock, better punk rock sounds. This is a great effort. This has definitely been influenced by so much more than just picking up your instrument and playing three chords and trying to create a band. These dudes knew what they were doing. Um, They could put a good tune together, and... um, We'll see we'll see what um Wikipedia says in regards to the record, so I don't know who's wrote this, but it states it is considered a classic from the punk era, produced at Kingsway Studio by John McCoy, so John McCoy did a good job. The style of music borrows heavily from blues and rock and roll, but infused much of the energy and social commentary that was shaping the wider punk rock scene. Right, so I think it's the elements of blues and rock and roll, um, but it's not the tasty sort of rock and roll I experienced with like some of the oi bands I've been listening to, uh, like some of the more pub rocky, um, down the boozer, catchy chorus, pop influenced uh, rock and roll. Critics were divided on the album's merits. Writing for the New Musical Express, James Shah Murray described the album as being as appetising as the tea bag left to dry on the saucer. That, that, that's creative. Uh, while in Sounds, Gary Bushell awarded the album five stars and called it a near-perfect slice of good time, high-energy punk. Wow, five stars. And Gary Bushell, which is a name I'm aware of, so I've just clicked him open, is an English newspaper columnist, rock music journalist, television presenter, author, musician, and political activist. He sings in the um, Cockney Oi Bands, GBX and the Gonads. He managed the New York City Oi Band, Man in Black, until the death of the band. Right, so that's a little bit of background on him. Uh, Name rings a bell as far as his endeavours. I don't know where I've come across him. The first 20,000 copies were played on blue vinyl, and the album reached number 21 in the UK album charts. Um... So when I've had a look in regards to some of the tunes on here, they released some as singles. So there must have been a little bit of a machine behind the UK subs at this point. Management, publicists and so on and so forth. The UK subs have released 26 official albums, each beginning with a different letter of the alphabet. Wow. Well, that's that, that that's something, isn't it? That was pretty cool. Sweet. Well, that's me signing out, people. Like I said, yeah, give me a break if you really like this record. Four out of tens, you know, quite, quite, quite acceptable. You know what I mean? If you caught me on a better mood, some of these tracks would be half decent. And I'm signing out.